It's a night of firsts for the ACU football team. I'm Sharon e. Morosky. And I'm Grant Boone. That's right. First home game of the season. First Southland Conference contest as well. And we'll get you ready for it right now on the Ken Collins Show. <laughs> Welcome to week three of the Ken Collum Show presented by Lawrence Hall. I'm Grant Boone, joined by ACU senior journalism major Sharon Nemorowski and the head football coach at Abilene Christian University, Ken Collins. Tonight at 6 p.m., ACU hosts the Huskies of Houston Baptist University. Coach, conference season begins tonight. Somebody's walking out of Shotwell 1-0 in the league, either you or Houston Baptist. When you talk to your team about conference play, do you talk differently than you do when it's a non-conference game? Well, you do a little bit, but the fact is early in the season, you're doing so much on focusing on your own team. Mm. Uh, and it really didn't matter if we would have started out in, in, as, a, as far as a conference game or whether we went to Fresno State. You're, you're focusing on your guys. Mm. Coach, early bye week, 16 days off. How was the time spent? It was good. We got to rest and uh, got to heal up. You know, we only, we only played one game. Uh, but you look up in that game, and, and we're limping off the field about every <laughs> yeah. fifth or sixth play, it seems like. Yeah. So, uh, you know, after playing a big, strong team, you want to rest a little bit and, and kind of get yourself back together. First game at Shotwell Stadium since last November. We will preview ACU versus Houston Baptist a little bit later on in the show. But when we come back, we'll go deep into the ACU roster to get you ready for the Cats' home opener. Glad you're with us. It's the Ken Collum Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Grant and Shara here with Coach Collins. No game film to review from last week with the bye week. So, Coach, we thought we would uh, take with this first game coming up, the first home game, first chance for the folks in the big country to see your team in person. We thought we'd take them deep inside your roster. Look at the depth chart here to introduce folks to the Wildcats for 2015. Let's start with the quarterback position, Coach. Uh, you had a guy in Parker McKenzie last year who threw for 22 touchdowns, threw for 3,000 yards. He started the game against Fresno State, uh, but as you found out last year, you do need more than one guy almost every single year. Tell us about the quarterbacks and what each guy brings. Well, Parker's a solid guy. I mean, he's a guy that he knows our offense. He beats people with his decision making. And what was unfortunate last week uh, was he made a couple of critical errors. Mm -hmm. And against good teams, they're going to make you pay. Uh, it doesn't always cost you. Sometimes you can get away with a, with a bad decision, but sometimes it, it does matter. But he is he's a, he's a solid quarterback. He is he is a calm guy that can handle the, all the pressure, all the decisions that we that we require of him, and we require a lot of our quarterbacks. And uh, sometimes I feel bad for him. They're getting blitzed <laughs> from all over the place, and they're having to make split second decisions. But that's quarterback play, and he does it really well. Uh, Dallas Seeley, you saw him play a little bit uh, in game one, and we'll continue to do that. I mean, he brings a different change up. He can run around a little bit. Still can make throws, but uh, you know he's a young guy, and and he is, he's a good decision maker. He's very accurate. I was a little di little bit disappointed in game one. He was wasn't quite as accurate as he is in, in practice. But guess what? It's game one. It's at Fresno State. But so we'll be at the friendly confines of uh, Shotwell, and and uh, both of them should be throwing strikes. Moving to running backs. Last season you had two really strong guys, DeAndre Brown, uh, Herschel Sims. This season, is it best to have a sort of tag team like that, or do you think there should be one person carrying the load? Well, in an ideal situation, you know, if you're playing a computer game and nobody got hurt, it would be awesome. You play <laughs> one guy and, and he stays healthy the whole time. But, uh, you know, the fact is, is football is a violent game. Those running backs get pelted from all over the place at all levels, and they're going to get dinged up. And you have to be tough, you have to be durable, you have to have the ability to lessen the blow at times. You know, that doesn't get, really get talked about a lot, but uh, if I'm a running back and I'm taking direct shots at the end of every play, I'm not going to last for 11 games. So uh, that's a long answer to, yeah, you need, more than, you need more than one, you need more than two. Uh, you actually need three. You need a stable of running backs. Uh, that are all bought in, that, that know what they're doing, that are highly skilled, and, and, and uh, we've got that. But uh, DeAndre, DeAndre's a very talented guy. Uh, Herschel's a talented guy. So those two guys are going to carry the load. 
Adrian Duncan, you mentioned needing three guys. I, th I think back to the Troy game. I mean, here you are trying to win your first FBS game <laughs> since 1959. Those two guys go out. You give it to Duncan. You told me this guy prepares like he's a starter. That's right. That's right. And everybody can't do that. And we're we're in Troy. We're in Troy, Alabama now. <laughs> we're trying to finish the game. There's not even a receiver on the field. They know we're going to run it. And we run it. He makes a good a good play and, and finishes the game for us. They give it the first down, then the touchdown. Right, let's talk about your wide receivers because uh, this is an area in which you have a lot of depth and you have a lot of veteran guys that I know you're counting on. Let's start with a couple of the seniors, Cedric Gilbert and Cade Stone. What do you, what do you look for? Those kind of a, a, a thunder and lightning with those guys. That's exactly right. You know, Cedric's a, a big guy. He's 6'2", 225. He is a physical type yes. receiver. He's an NFL body. Isn't yes, it? he is. And he works extremely hard. If you could see him work in practice, the guy's exhausted after every practice. And it's not like that with a lot of people, but his, he, he works so hard. So it doesn't surprise me or anybody else to see him make plays out there in the field. But uh, Cade Stone is a, he is not a flashy guy for sure, but you get in the ball and by and large he outruns whoever is covering him. I mean, he, is a, he has speed. He's, he may be, he's our, one of our fastest guys for sure. And so we like to get him in little spots where we can dink the ball to him and, and, and let him use his speed. But uh, you look at Jonathan Epps, he is more of a wiggle guy. Man, when he touches it, you know, people are kind of, People are kind of holding on. The, you know, the Fresno coaches were going, man, he, he made us nervous. And it, it would be, too, if I was uh, preparing against him. But, you know, Monty Green, he's done a great job. He's had a great spring, great fall camp. This is his last go-around, too, and, and uh, he's, he should have a good season. Two guys got their first catches as Wildcats, Carl Whitley and – and Byron Proctor got in the end zone in the last play of the game. That's exactly You'll right. You'll need those guys, not just this year. Yep, and both of those guys are learning. Uh, both of them has, have, a, have a way to, ways to go, but, but you know what? They're all bought into what we do, and they, they, they accept their role. And uh, when you have guys that do that, all these guys have, have really good hearts. When you, look, when you watch the Wildcats play, what you don't see from the stands is their hearts. And, it, and, and that, that allows us to be a dynamic team. It really does. Let me lump in with the receivers tied in because Jamie Walker is one of the best in the business. He, he sure is. He, he, he can create some matchups that you have to take advantage of. You cannot go into a game, especially in the red zone. You see in the NFL all the time, all those tight ends catch red zone passes. And he, he creates some issues for some defenses. Mm -hmm. Speaking more young guys, the offensive line, you had three guys play their first game in Fresno. How do you expect the O-line to perform this season? Well, they better perform a little better than they did against big, strong Fresno. Yeah. And, uh, but but the, the thing is, is, you know, Cody Funk's our main guy. He's, 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 our, he's our main left tackle, and, and he anchors this whole thing. But when the closer to the ball you get, you need working parts. I mean, there's a whole lot that can happen with your guards and, a, and, and your center, and we've just got guys who hadn't done it much. And uh, they will. They're going to be good. They'll take a big step this this week. You'll see tonight. They'll 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 play better and they'll get they'll be able to to open up some holes a little bit better than they did against Fresno. But but we should we should be fine. All right, that's the offense. When we come back on the Ken Collins Show, presented by Lawrence Hall, we'll take a look at the defense. And as we go to break, take a look at scores from last week in the Southland Conference. Back here on the Ken Collum Show, presented by Lawrence Hall, we are taking you into the ACU depth chart. We talked about the offense last segment. Coach, let's talk about the defense. Let's start with the defensive line. Uh, this is a group, a unit, that lost one of the very best pass rushers in ACU history, Nick Richardson. But as we saw uh, against Fresno State, you've still got some talent at that position. So let's start with Josh Bloom and what he brings. Yeah, I love talking about D-line. And I'm, I'm, I'm an offensive coach by trade, but... It doesn't take very long to figure out that if you want to see the best teams in college football and the NFL, you look at D-line play because that is that's 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 the beginning and the end and and some quarterback play in there too. But uh, Josh Bloom is a big, strong guy. He's starting to really come on, and we're going to need him. We're going to need him to compress. He is a bull in a china closet at times, <laughs> and he doesn't on mind. and off the field. He's a crazy time, guy. Yes. And but. But he is, uh, he's critical. Those type guys are absolutely critical because you've got to get pushed, you've got to compress, but you've got to be able to get heat on the edge too. You scored your first touchdown against Fresno State because he, on first down, dropped the running back for a loss of, what, three or four yards. That put them in second and long, and then they couldn't get out of it. That's exactly right. Coach, linebackers, you took a big hit at the Fresno game with Travis Tarver out with an injury. 
What do you see these guys doing this season? Well, we don't know if Travis will play tonight. He, you know, he's got a midfoot sprain, and that may be a just a call right before the game. He's been preparing, and he's coming along. He's going to be fine. But uh, you've got to have when you have a good D line. The next thing is, I mean, you got to have guys that are going to that are when when that running back uh, bounces that ball. You've got those linebackers just just coming up pelting those guys and Sam Denmark in the middle I mean, he's the little general out there he's running the show and then you've got Lynn Grady on one side and Travis Tarver on the other other and so we're in a good spot those guys aren't big but they but they've been through seasons and they've they're they're going to be durable enough to to make it through this season and you love to have two seniors Tarver and Grady two sophomores Sam Denmark and then Bryson Gates we saw him rushing off the edge a lot against yes. Fresno State yes and those are guys that we're still learning about those guys, yeah. and our job as coaches is to put them in a spot where they can where they can do well. Let's talk about your secondary. This is a group, a, a unit that from last year took a hit. I mean, you lost Angel Lopez, you lost Justin Stewart, but as we saw in the Fresno State game, there's some real talent back there. Junior Henderson made a big play that really uh, gave your team a lift late in the second half. Yeah, when you lose two seniors at safeties, because in, in Darian Doolin's defense, and by and large, in most defenses, those safeties, if they, they're back there, they see, they've got the best seat in the house. So they're calling the shots. They're making, making adjustments. And when you put guys in there that haven't played, it's a little bit spooky. But, uh, you know, Junior Henderson, he, he, he's still learning w what he's doing, but he's a good player. And he, just, he, he was in the right spot at the, at the right time. And, and uh, you know, guys like that, uh, DJ Arnold, you know, uh, when he left the game with a, with a knee injury, he's going to be fine. Those guys have been around here. We've got some guys that have been here, just had not done it enough yet. I will say, you, you had a lot of snaps from, from Richard Griffin III and Cedric Dale in the Fresno State game. And again, you're putting young guys, guys who hadn't played before, in a very hostile environment. We saw Griffin deflect a pass on the goal line that Arnold wound up picking off. I mean, right. it, the, yep. the, the, the frustration is they're young, but the good news is they got into a very tough situation and at times performed well. That's right, and that's the first pressure situation that, mm. that you know, we've had scrimmages under the lights, and all, but you go to Fresno, it's a different animal. And you're at Shotwell, it's a different animal. Everybody pays to come see you see, see you play. And so we're still learning about all that. Cedric Dale's going to be a really good player. Looks like it. Yeah, uh, Griffin, uh, th those those guys are going to be good players. It's just we're learning more about them as we go. But, uh, you know, the future's bright for our secondary. We're fired up about it. Coach, finishing it off with special teams. This was a group going into the season everyone was pretty sure about. Now Nick Grau is out, the kicker for the season. Uh, what is your plan for them? Well, we've got to find somebody that's going to kick it through the uprights, and uh, you know it's been uh, it's been interesting all week. And uh, but you know Nick Grau's a great player; he's one of our best best players. And when you lose one of your guys, every time he goes out there, there's points on the board. And when you don't have that, you've got to be creative. And we may you know we may end up going for it a little bit more on fourth down until we figure out. Uh, how much do we trust our kickers? What hash do they like a little bit better? I mean, there's a whole lot that goes into it, uh, but we'll be fine. Uh, Hayden Berdowski, he's one of the better deep snappers that you'll see all season long, regardless of who we play. Austin Kilcullen, you know, he's still a he's still a I mean, he's a solid punter now. He'll he'll pin you back, and so we've got a lot of good things going. Mark Roboto does a great job uh, for our special teams. He he's the coordinator for all those teams, and uh, you know we'll. we'll We'll, put, we'll, we'll kick some field goals. <laughs> you know, isn't it funny, though, Coach? So many of the, of, of, of the casual fans, we don't think a lot about special teams. You tend to notice it when you don't have great players. You have been blessed in, in this year, 11th season. Think about the guys you've had. Matt Adams, oh Morgan gosh, Lineberry, yeah. Spencer, Covey all those years. Yes. And, and Grau and Kilcullen. You yes. notice it, isn't that almost the way it is? You notice it when you don't have them. Yes, that's exactly right. You take you, you take a long snapper, for example. Yeah, that's yeah. And and, and nobody says anything until you don't have one. <laughs> and and uh, there's only one thing worse than a failed third down, and that's a failed fourth down. So you so you better have those guys in place. All right, there is the ACU two deep offense, defense, and special teams. Let's take a look at what's happening around the rest of the ACU sports world. Here's the. ACU JMC Network Sportscast. Thanks, Grant. For Jonathan Rates, I'm Hannah Knoll. ACU Athletics will partner with Nike for uniforms and team sportswear beginning in July of next year. Here's more on the five-year deal. World leaders in what they do. Nike is the number one sports apparel company in the world, and they have been for a long time. And there's not a lot of schools that get to say that they are an official Nike school, but now ACU fits into that category. 
Uh, we are the only school in the Southland Conference uh, to have a Nike contract. We're only the fifth school in the state of Texas with UT, TCU, Baylor, and SMU. So this is really a prestigious company that we're now a part of, and it's, it's thrilling, it's flattering, it's humbling, and it's exciting. And I, I really want to encourage all of ACU, all of our alumni, fans, students, student athletes, faculty, staff, let's celebrate this one. The golf team finished this weekend tied for 13th in Colorado in its first tournament of the season. ACU in Utah left with a 22 over par, 886. Junior transfer Ryan Beatty finished tied for 12th in individual standings for a total of 214 over the three rounds. Senior Dylan Vaughn wasn't far behind. He finished 17th with 216 for the three rounds. The golf team will be back in Colorado next weekend for the Ram Masters Invitational. The tennis team hit the court this weekend with an inter-squad scrimmage. The team will travel to Midland on Friday to face its first opponents of this season in the Racquet Club Invitational. After seeing everyone play this weekend, I'm really uh, excited to see what our freshmen are going to bring to the table. We have three new freshmen, uh, Sebastian Langdon, uh, Cole Lawson, and Josh Sheehy. Um, all of them are freshmen. We have a transfer sophomore this year actually too, so we got four new players. So I think they're going to they're gonna bring a lot to the table, and I'm excited to see what uh, what they're going to add to the team, because last year we didn't have a very big team, so this year we've almost like doubled in size, so that's exciting. I'm expecting it to be a lot of fun, because it, like it, in college it's all together as a team, so you have a team supporting you all the time, you're not just out there alone, and it'll be a lot of fun to play. And it's been great to walk out here every day and know everyone else is going to be out here. You don't have to go look for your own people to hit with, and you get to see the people all the time, they're like our family now. The ACU soccer team suffered two losses this weekend against TCU and the University of Texas. TCU outscored the Wildcats 4-0 and had 19 shots compared to ACU's 5. ACU kept UT on its toes with a close game that ended a 2-1 loss for the Wildcats. Goalkeeper Sidney Newton had a strong showing with 11 saves, but UT outshot their opponents with 26 shots next to ACU's 9. Sophie Standifer was a key player in the match, scoring the lone goal in four attempts. The Wildcats have their first conference game Friday at home against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. As we welcome you back to the Ken Column Show presented by Lawrence Hall, take a look at this week's Southland Conference schedule. You'll notice Northwestern State at Hale State taking on the Bulldogs of Mississippi State down in Starkville, Mississippi, and you'll also see Three other Southland Conference matchups, including Lamar visiting Sam Houston State. The Cardinals last week gave the Baylor Bears, the mighty Baylor Bears, a heck of a first half fight. All right, ACU and Houston Baptist tonight, the Southland Conference opener for both teams. The third meeting between these two, the first meeting in Abilene. The first two games were in Houston. Last year, Herschel Sims racked up nearly 200 all-purpose yards, three touchdowns in a 59-14 Wildcats win. In Houston, ACU won big in the first matchup as well, 69-12 to in 2013. That was Houston Baptist's first ever season of football. It wasn't even officially a season. They played just seven games that year. Coach, let's look at tonight's matchup. Both teams come in getting ready for their first Southland Conference game. You're 0-1 after the loss to Fresno. They're 1-1. They beat an NAIA team, Bethany College from Kansas. They lost big 34-10 to Northern Colorado, a team you'll finish your season against in November. How important is it? How much pressure does this offense feel to have a big night after some of the frustration it felt against Fresno State? I don't think there's any pressure on us uh, whatsoever. The pressure is, you know what, let's go out and play clean mm. and not because we don't ever talk about points. We don't, have a, we don't even have a goal, hey, let's score this, this amount of points. It's just, you know what, let's play clean. Let's protect the ball. We should be the best in the country at protecting the ball. And if we, if we go out offensively, uh, and play clean, do the right thing, make good decisions, we should be fine. We're not going to be, it's going to be a little bit different than, than Fresno State. We're not going to be overwhelmed at any point with, with matchups across the board. The matchup should be favorable a little bit more toward the Wildcats. Coach, flipping it, looking at Houston Baptist's offense, what's the number one concern for your defense? Well, we've got to play smarter. Uh, defensively. Last week we played hard. I mean, against against uh, Fresno State, we played extremely hard, and for four quarters we played hard. Didn't play quite as smart, so they moved pretty pretty quickly. So we've got to get lined up, 
get our keys, get honed in, uh, and, and play a little bit more disciplined football. Max Staver, the quarterback, originally went to Florida, redshirted there, and then played at Tyler Junior College before transferring to Houston. It should be a lot of fun. The Southland Conference opener, the home opener at Shotwell Stadium, 6 o'clock kickoff. We'll have the pregame show for you on the AZ Sports Network beginning at 5.30. And don't forget Wildcat Country, the new tailgating area at Shotwell Stadium, opens at 3 p.m. Free food, games for the kids, fun for all ages. Hope you can make it out for that. For Sharon Nemoroski, for Coach Ken Collins, I'm Grant Boone. Enjoy the game tonight, and thanks for watching the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence.